Today we're doing something a bit different. Today we're not talking about specifications or power or performance. Today we're going to be talking about which are the most beautiful smartphones of all time. This should be interesting. So we're going to start with the Honor 9, especially considering this isn't a super high-end flagship phone, what they've managed to achieve with their design is beyond impressive. We've got 3D curved glass on the front and the back, and these blend seamlessly into a metal body. And this thing has a dazzling reflective finish. Just holding it in your hand and moving it from left to right, it's got layer upon layer of reflections, which means that it looks different in just about every single lighting condition. So then, released right at the end of last year, we've got the Xiaomi Mi Mix, and of the entire smartphone era, this has to have been one of the biggest surprises. At the time of its release, it had the largest screen to body ratio on any smartphone full stop. And the number of elements that had to be redesigned to make this possible was genuinely groundbreaking. Everything from the speaker placement to the headphone jack to the size of the sensor on the front camera, the level of innovation going on here was insane. And the front of the phone is dominated by a 6.4 inch display with an aspect ratio of 17 to nine. And the fact that almost every specification of this phone is just so unique is what really makes it so eye-catching. And the back of the phone is pretty interesting too. It's one of the first smartphones to have a full ceramic back, which means it's essentially as hard as sapphire. If you get the 18K edition of the phone, it's also got gold-plated rings around the camera and the fingerprint sensor. So it really is trying to impress. Now, this list wouldn't be complete without the Acer Predator 6, which is such an interesting smartphone because back in late 2015, it was leaked, it was rumored, and then it was finally announced but it never became a commercial product. Having said that, it looks amazing. It's far from a minimalist product, but the word badass kind of springs to mind when you see the design. The front of the device is dominated by four quad-channel speakers, which kind of work together to create this super immersive, super surround sound experience. And turning it over to the rear, we've got a combination of metal for sturdiness and plastic to keep it lightweight, which has genuinely one of the most aggressive design languages we've ever seen on a tech product. So next up is the Huawei P10. This is a smartphone design that doesn't scream, it doesn't shout for attention, but at the same time it is beautiful, minimalist, and sophisticated. The company has included something called a hyper diamond cut finish, which is their answer to having a premium metal finish on a phone without attracting fingerprints and while still letting you grip the device properly. And to be honest, this has to be one of the nicest phones to hold too. That finish, combined with the fact that the back and the front is completely flush, makes it feel very compact, very dense, and also very well thought out. Something else that's also really interesting about the Huawei P10 is this is the first time the company has collaborated with Pan10. And what that means is they've created some, let's say, rather special color variations of the phone. So then a phone that you've probably heard of, the Galaxy S8. And with its new Infinity display, the company claimed this is the first truly seamless smartphone on the planet. And they weren't kidding. When you actually hold the phone in your hands, you'll realize you actually cannot feel the point where the screen meets the side of the smartphone. You can move it around in your hands, and for the whole time it'll feel like one complete object. The front and the back are also protected by Gorilla Glass 5, which makes it a little bit thicker than it could be, but at the same time structurally quite a strong phone. Next up, and to be honest, right on the other end of the spectrum, is a phone called the Blue Boo Picasso. And you're probably pretty intrigued to see a budget smartphone on this list. And to be honest, looking at the front of the phone, it's pretty unremarkable. But it's really when you turn the phone over that you start to see how it's made the list. The back is split into many different polygons, all of which are facing a slightly different direction, and some of which actually have a slightly different finish to each other. And that results in a constantly entertaining light show every time you hold the phone in your hands and you simply rotate it from left to right. So then we've got the HTC One M7, and at the time of its release, this was probably the largest departure HTC had ever made from its previous set of smartphones. And to be honest, it kind of needed it, its last year's HTC One X, whilst a pretty good phone, was not a commercial success, and their answer came in the form of a unibody aluminium smartphone. And this phone made people's jaws drop. It combined that luxury metal finish with a beautiful 1080p display up front and some of the best speakers you can still get on any smartphone. Whilst you could argue that HTC later refined that design with the One M8 and the One M9, none of those later iterations really wowed as much as the M7 did. And then we have the next bit Robin a smartphone that garnered a lot of attention because essentially it claimed to never run out of space. Everything you did with the smartphone was automatically synced to the cloud, and therefore you'd never have to store any files natively on it. But the other thing that caught my attention was the finish of the smartphone. Now it's made almost entirely out of a matte finished polycarbonate, which clearly isn't as premium as something like found on the HTC One M7, 
but at the same time it wasn't trying to be. It was trying to be a little bit fun, a little bit edgy, but at the same time minimalist. They combined a flat, boxy smartphone design with circular buttons, circular sensors, circular camera, and even circular speakers up front, and it made for a very interesting device. It was colourful, it was vibrant, it was a lot of fun. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I've got tons more stuff like this, and tons more coming up. So with that being said, I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.